you could put a body under here. That and more on this week's Cheaper Jeeper TV. Stay tuned. Well, after constructing the Jeep platform, it was time for the finishing touches. For me, I chose to sand down all the pieces and put a nice coat of varnish on, as I believe that's probably the simplest way to finish the platform. As you can see here, I'm sanding down the cargo bay cross piece and cargo legs. And this is the front cross piece. It's cut in the 60-40 configuration, so I have the flexibility of setting it up in those ways. And here are the support pieces that go between the cargo bay cross piece and the front cross piece. And here is the cargo bay platform all in one piece, but you'll see in this episode I actually cut it into two separate pieces and I'll explain the functionality of that decision in this video. And here's the 60% piece and there's the 40% piece. And last but not least, the pillow extension pieces. And then finally, I brought the pieces inside, dusted them off, and put on a nice coat of varnish. All pieces got two coats, but the top of the platform got three coats. Here it is, the pièce de résistance, the final product all glistening in its glory. I absolutely love how it turned out. And I decided to stay with the varnish instead of paint or bed liner as it's easy to keep clean and just wipe off if it gets wet or stained. On one forum, a gentleman who painted it with bed liner was disappointed that the rough texture of the bed liner would cause dirt to be difficult to be removed. So I decided to go with a nice smooth varnish since I had it on hand. Paint would also do. Carpet would look great because it would just fit right in and look like it belonged there. But again, then I'd have to deal with vacuuming and everything like that. And I'm going to have this covered with a mattress or a foam pad anyway. So I just stuck with a nice coat of varnish just so I could just keep it sealed and cleaned. Here I'm showing the storage space underneath. Let's just have a look at that lovely platform that we've constructed. I really like the finish. And all these beautiful pieces are supported by the structure that's beneath it. So now let's have a look at constructing the platform. So there's the removal of the cargo tub cover and then here are the cargo legs. That little corner notch is to avoid carpeting and the larger notch is for the integration of the cross piece. And then on the cross piece you have these edge notches to avoid carpeting and the longer one goes on the side that doesn't have the subwoofer and then the pieces all integrate and hold each other up. And then the front cross piece is installed. I have mine cut into 60-40 so I can have that flexibility of implementing a 40% or 60% platform. Here come the cross support pieces. And then you can see how I had the cargo platform in two pieces. That's the front part of the cargo platform where the subwoofer is and here's the back part. And I'll show its functionality later in the video. Here comes the 60% piece. Now the 40% piece. Lots and lots of space. The sleeping platform can be in place while driving, but when you get to your destination you require extra length. You just slide up the front seat, pull the support pieces out a little further, and then just place the pillow extension pieces on top. And that will give you a total distance of 6 feet 1 inches from the back of the seat to the tailgate door. So here I am hopping in. And that's just all self-supporting there. And you can see I had no trouble with it. You just remove the panels to access storage mini. Now that's with the seats there and there's that much storage. You'll be seeing in the video later uh, the storage without the seats. Now I'm demonstrating how from the inside you can access what's below the cargo area. Nice and deep pockets of storage. At this point in time I thought, hey, I could just sit here. If I have a platform going across the tub, I can actually work there or make some coffee in the morning without having to leave the Jeep. So it got me thinking of another video or project. 
And then you just slide that plate right back. And then I'm accessing more storage there just by lifting up the back cargo hatch. And everything's just self-supporting there, sitting on top, nice and snug, even with me shaking around on top. There's some of the functionality with the 40% seat up and the rest of the platform still there. Here's the rear seat up so I can carry passengers and still keep the cargo platform in there full time if I wanted. And then this is showing the midsection of the platform in the Jeep if I was driving to the destination with the seats up and I could just put it in place. Now about this, how did I do that? Well, I removed the back seats and you could see the volume of storage available now beneath the platform. Not just in the cargo bay area, but below where the back seats used to be. I have a video on how to remove it. I was a little nervous, but actually after I did it, it wasn't so bad and maybe the video will help you. Here's another shot of the storage available beneath the platform when the seats are removed. So now here's a look at the platform and the seats are gone and you can see underneath the tons and tons of storage space. You could put a refrigerator under there, you could store anything under there. Here's another view from the other side of the amount of space below the platform when you remove the seats. But now what we're looking at here is a bit of a problem. Because as you see, the front cross piece stands alone when the rear seat is removed. When the rear seat is there, it actually holds in place the cross piece. When the rear seat is gone, there's nothing there to support the front cross piece. So creative use of some fasteners would help in this regard, but right now our government is asking us to exercise social distancing, to flatten the curve of the virus, and stop the spread to only leave home for absolute necessities. For example, getting food. This would help save lives and help our frontline workers. So this leaves me in a quandary as I don't have fasteners yet and I don't think going out to buy some fasteners and some foam for the mattress is a necessity at this point in time, especially when our frontline workers need our support. So what I'm going to do instead is just sort of demonstrate virtually what I would do when I get a chance to get out to get the brackets and the foam mattress. So what you see here is the front cross piece unsupported. I could, for example, make some wooden braces for the front cross piece as you see in the crew diagram there. Or we could use 90 degree angle brackets from the back of the front cross piece where I can bolt them down using the rear bolts of the front seat and install them to the front cross piece using some wing nuts for example to make it easy or if I didn't want to do that I could use these bolt holes in the floor of the Jeep left from the rear seat and find some brackets that would fit for that application. Now another spot where I would like to secure the lower support pieces is in the cargo area and you can see for example by the left cargo leg there's a bolt in the tub right here where I could use a 90 degree angle bracket to hold that cargo leg in place and as we go across to the other side there's another bolt in the tub where I could use an angle bracket to secure the other cargo leg. I intentionally placed the cargo legs in these locations to take advantage of those bolts. Or what you're seeing here, I'm considering drilling holes here in the cross support pieces and the top of the platform piece. And here, the other side of the support piece and the top of the 60% platform piece. And then when I put the platform piece on top of the support pieces, I could insert a two inch galvanized nail into the hole to pin the piece in place, where I could just remove it by pulling up on the nail. And here we have the whole platform where I would like to install a foam mattress in sections to mirror the platform pieces. So in this SketchUp diagram, you could see the platform pieces. And then in this diagram, you see all of the pill pieces, which are cut exactly the same dimensions as the platform piece. So if I felt like it, I could remove the foam pads that cover the 40% piece, including the 40% platform 
and its support pieces. This would enable me, if I was on my own, to sleep on the 60% portion of the platform and have access to the underside with the seats removed to things like a cooler and I could use the 40% section area to sit up and put on my shoes, for example. And then while I'm there, I could even lift up the platform in the cargo area to even access more things. And this illustrates the beauty of this design. So now I'll just have to enjoy the platform as it is, as it still works mighty fine. Well, to be honest, I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. It didn't cost too much, you know. I'm in it about 50 bucks, and it weighs about 58 pounds. And I'm gonna find out how much that rear seat weighs, because then I might realize that I'm even actually lighter having removed the rear seat. Anyway, in a future video, when I go camping, I hope to have the mattress by then, and you'll get a chance to see it then. So make sure you subscribe, click the like button, so that you don't miss any of my future upcoming videos. So for now, let's move on to our tip segment. Now for some cheaper, jeeper tips. Hey, in this week's tips feature, I wanna talk with you a little bit about a tool that you could use to help ensure your Jeep is level for things like, say, camping. Well, there's an app called Measure. And when you hit the icon on your phone for the app, you'll be presented with an option to hit Measure or Level. And we're concerned with Level, so we'll press Level. And then you could see the little, it's uh, to represent like a level bubble. And you could take your iPhone, set it up here on your armrest, and it'll show you whether or not your Jeep is level or if perhaps one part of the Jeep is higher or lower than the other. This will just help you determine where you need to put a rock and drive up onto or a piece of wood to make sure that your Jeep is nice and level. Another application of this tool is if you wanted to make sure your Jeep is level when you're doing your differential oil change, for example. When you refill your differentials with oil, you have to fill them till the oil comes out of the fill hole. And so to make sure you have the right amount, you want to make sure that your Jeep is perfectly level. And you can just use this by placing your iPhone on the running board and it'll show you when you have the Jeep level. So just a little tip, thought you might find it helpful. So now let's move on to our subscriber tip feature. And now for subscribers tips. Hey Cheaper Cheaper TV. I use the X-Sprite mattress sleeping camping bed pad in my Jeep. It's got great reviews online and makes relaxing and sleeping in the Jeep much nicer. Signed, Ira Lax. Hey Ira. I appreciate the idea. In fact, that was a product I was looking at when I began investigating sleeping in the back of the Jeep. Still leaves me with concern about the bump in the back here of the Jeep with the uh, rear seat and this cover. And I, I chose to investigate the use of a platform. Now, even people who have a platform, they could still use that product because it is quite versatile and it's customized for the Jeep, whether it's the JK or the JL. As you heard in the earlier part of the video, for my platform, I'm going to maybe make something very similar to that product, but the actual mattress pieces will mirror the platform pieces. But thank you very much for bringing that product to our attention. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV and our last video for this series on the Jeep camping sleeping platform. We hope that you found it interesting. Thank you all for joining. Be sure to come back next week on Cheaper Jeeper TV, where we help you get the most for your money so that you can get the most for your Jeep. Stay safe. Take care.